So this is my first review, so you gotta bear with me. I've tried to do this two times, and both times I just kind of like trailed off <laughs> everything that I was saying. I was just like, yeah, and it's good, and then, uh, oh, look, some shoes. Like, I'm, I'm not all there. But, um, the book I'm reviewing today is The First Bad Man by Miranda July. I'm going to hold it like this because the paper is kind of, I don't know. This book follows Cheryl Glickman who is, who works at a, at a company that makes like self-defense videos but they're not really self-defense videos and she's forced to take in her boss's daughter. Her boss's daughter is in her early 20s and to me this is one of the best depictions of women I've read in a while because the daughter is is buxom, I guess you could call it bodacious. Is that something some people say outside of the 90s? I don't really know. She's she's hot. It's basically what it is. But she's also not the stereotypical hot girl. She's very aggressive both physically and emotionally. She has this like weird toe fungus that the narrator, Cheryl, um, describes more than once and it is completely off-putting. She's a slob, she's weird, but she has, sorry, just like burp. <laughs> Speaking of a slob, that is weird. Um, she, <laughs> she's, She's hot, but she's more complex than that. She has, like, a lot of stuff going on. And the book kind of follows the relationship that develops between this woman who's unlikable and gross, but appealing to men, and Cheryl, who is kind of a timid and strange woman who suffers from Globus Hystericus, which is basically, um... She has a big ball in her throat because she gets so nervous and uptight um, and she goes to all types of doctors. It is very, it is a, a very strange book and because of that I don't want to go too much into a synopsis because I think the pleasure of this book is watching it all unfold and having all of that weirdness that you think is kind of stupid at first come to a point where it actually seems completely necessary. And that's what I love about Miranda July is there are so many times where I'll like start, like when I first saw Me and You and Everyone We Know, when I started I was like, is this one of those like indie films, those like indie for the sake of being indie, strange for the stage, sake of being strange, like what the fuck is going on? And it all like comes together perfectly. Um, and that's what happens in this book and this is, that's the book's strongest point and that a bunch of things that you want to be like roll, rolling your eyes at actually have a tremendous impact um, on the characters and you as a reader. So yeah, that was definitely the biggest um, quality of this book, I guess you could say. Um, I think what else this book has going for it is July's writing. Uh, she has, you could tell that she doesn't just write. She has a very cinematic and I guess like a fine art mind in that she, the, the strength of this book is almost how it's curated, how it's structured, how everything is positioned so that it works together. You could um, take another writer who's very talented and give him or her the plot of this book and it would either turn out drastically different as obviously it would or way worse than this. Um, I think July has practiced and <clears throat> sorry my throat is out of control um, cultivated this type of sensibility very well in that she is able to position everything whether it's events um, different things people say anything like that so well 
that it makes something that might seem a little off-putting or might seem a little otherworldly grounded in reality because how it could be our editor I don't know but how this book is kind of edited um so yeah I wish I had more to say on this book maybe I should have just kept this to the the wrap up but I figured because it's a new book I should do a standalone um review but yeah she has a blurb from Lena Dunham, Lena Dunham or whatever her name is on the back of this which I'm not super happy about I'm not a fan of her but Hilton Owls also did a blurb and A.M. Holmes and Dave Eggers. If you like Lena Dunham, you probably wouldn't like this, to be honest. Or I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'd recommend it. It's really great. Um, I think what... I mean, usually the ending is what literally brings a, a book home. But I think what... Um, what brings this book home for me is how well everything is wrapped up in the end. Not in a happy way. I don't mean like wrapped up in a nice pretty bow. I mean that some things that throughout the, the book you're kind of like, why? Why did that need to be said? Or why? What the hell is the point of this? Um, she kind of brings it all f full circle and um, she has this amazing, I don't want to go, I don't want to give so much away in this because really I think what I enjoyed the most about this is seeing things that I thought were just going to be weird for weird's sake blossom into something really amazing. Um, but she has this, Cheryl has this like, theory about Kubelko Bondi. If anybody reads this book, the Kubelko Bondi, Kubelko Bondi um, strain throughout this book is amazing and it speaks to me it's so much um, as someone who loves, loves, loves children. Um, but it's not that creepy. <laughs> But anyway, um, anybody who reads this, Kubelko Bondi, Bondi, that whole thing really got me. I almost teared up a little bit at parts of it just thinking about that. But um, yeah, I would give this an 8.5 eight and eight and out of 10 stars. Solid. So, thanks. I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at myself on the screen and I'm like, what is the point of you? Anyway, actually, that's a question this book asks, and asks well, so I'd recommend it. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a nice day.